everybody, Slim Kirby here. Welcome back to Let's Play Fire Emblem Path of Radiance. Welcome to the very long, very tedious chapter 17. Now, I've been talking about this chapter for a few days now, and boy, I am not kidding when I say it's long. If you want an idea of how long it is, uh, as I said in earlier videos, it is four parts, uh, four different battles. And... I only did half of the battles today. Uh, I recorded uh, part one and two, and it took me almost an hour just to film those um, battles and then just to finish up. Normally it takes me like, I don't know, maybe upwards to 30 minutes to do a battle, which I guess is about right, but still, just to think that I'm only halfway done with a chapter at that, at that time limit really puts it into perspective of how long this chapter actually is. So, <clears throat> one of the reasons why I don't really like this chapter is it feels too bland, almost. Uh, you pretty much fight on the same exact battlefield, all four parts. <clears throat> Obviously, it's not the same. It's more uh, just similar in the sense that this terrain is pretty much the same thing on every single battle. And it's structured in the same way. Uh, movement is hindered in, like, several different spots in each battlefield, and it's just... It's just, they all look the same, really. I mean, you obviously get new new objectives in every battle. Like, in the first battle, you have to route all the enemies. In the second one, you have to arrive at the blue square. Third one, you have to survive for a certain amount of turns. And the last one, you have to defeat the boss, which is Oliver. Which, I guess they do, like, make it a little bit uh, varied in that sense, but still... I don't know, I'm just not a big fan of this chapter. But it can be fun for other people. I mean, I think the battles are structured pretty well. Like, each each battle offers you a new kind of challenge. Uh, there are some enemies in, like, certain battles that can give you trouble. And, like, it, it's, it's a good battle and it's not a good battle. It kind of depends on what perspective you're looking at it. And, uh, hopefully this doesn't take me too long. As I've said in other videos, I am structuring this, so I do one part each day. So the videos for today are going to be part one, tomorrow part two, Wednesday part three, and Thursday part four. And right now, as you can see, I'm going through all the base stuff I do for every chapter. Uh, the first chapter is just, um, you talk with one of Oliver's servants, and he basically just tells you what to expect in the next few chapters. And then there's also one with Jill, because, as you know, uh, Jill was actually part of Dan. Uh, she joined us in Chapter 12, and she's still around in Chapter 17. So Ike's just wondering why she's still here. And then Jill's just telling us that she has a new perspective on Lagoos, because she used to really hate Lagoos, because that is what she was taught. But then once she saw the Goldowen dragons helping uh, Ike and his comrades out decided that hmm, maybe the goos aren't that bad and she decided that she's going to stay with us but uh, we'll go back to Jill later on in the game because she does have some more uh, significance in a future chapter coming up and now I'm going to go through the supports I'm going to do just the both supports for Rolf right now I could have also done I think I forgot who else was available but no, I think it was just Rolf's two, uh, two supports that I was going to work on. So I'm just going to go through these really quickly, and then I'm just going to go ahead and go on. In this conversation, Rise is getting very sick, and Rolf is getting pretty angry at him, because uh, he tried to hide it so well, but Rolf's like, Okay, stick close to me in the battlefield, I'll protect you. And then Rise is like, Thank you, Rolf, you're a good kid. And then... Rolf and Mist talk in this conversation about how Mist really doesn't want to fight anymore. But Rolf, like, he was kind of encouraged to start fighting for the group by Mist. And now Mist has suddenly changed her mind while Rolf is, like, all excited about battling now. And then Rolf is just going to talk to her about, we need to help defend everybody because I want to. And blah, 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 blah. Support conversation. Yeah, nothing too big, but those are, uh the two Rolf B supports I'm going to do for this episode. 
Again, if uh, you want to see like some of the other supports for those who have never played this game before, uh, you can probably find some support conversation scripts online. I uh, just go to Google and type uh, Path of Radiance support scripts. It's usually one of the first few options. You could also go to Game FAQs because Game FAQs have a few sites where they show uh, game scripts as well. Just to give you an idea of where you can go to find some of those. And once I find a good place where you can find them all, I'll just put them in like one of my video descriptions. So welcome to Serenus Forest. Uh, for the last few days we've been looking for uh, that heron that we found in the Oliver's Mansion. And also, like, as uh, Sitarman345 pointed out in an earlier episode, I realize heron is heron, not heron. I just, that's just a bad habit I have. I always seem to pronounce things the wrong way. It's a bad habit, I know, but hey, I can't help it. So it's heron, not heron. Whatever, it's, whatever. So now we're going to go deeper in the forest, and this is when the actual battle starts. The first one is a route all enemies battle, as I mentioned earlier. It's not too difficult. In fact, the hardest part of this battle actually comes near the end, which means that if you get very unlucky at the end, yeah, you could start the whole chapter over. Because uh, there's a halberdier with a killer lance, and there's also a mage with elf under and even though L Thunder won't uh, give the mage that high of a critical hit rate, uh, the Killer Lance guy will. So uh, make sure you have high defenders near the end of the battle, just so you can block that Killer Lance. But you really don't want to use Gotri to do that because Gotri could get in the way of the mages and he's really weak against them. So you kind of have to figure out what you want to do for that part, just so you don't lose any units. I uh, personally found a good al alternative to what I was going to do, so things actually did work out for me in the end, which is pretty good. Also, something else about these battles is you don't get too many units in this first battle, but uh, as you go from part to part, you get to add two more uh, units in each part to reinforce your uh, main unit force. Like, I think you get 12 units for this battle. I want to say 12. It's either 12 or 10. I think it's 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, I think that's 12. So, uh, don't worry. You can use, like, quite a few units in this chapter, or in this whole chapter. But you just start out with a few units. Then you add two more on in part 2, two more on in part 3, and then two more on in part 4. So also, if you if you plan to use certain units later on, make sure that they're actually equipped with uh, certain items, because the worst thing that could happen to you is you bring a character with you, you uh, reinforce with the character, and then you find out that the character didn't have any items, like you gave your items to someone else or you put them in the convoy or something. So uh, make sure you give some extra units. Like if you have a set team that you plan on using uh, throughout the entire game, uh, it still might not be enough to uh, use them all in this chapter. You might have to add a few more. Like uh, Some of the pr uh, pre-promoted units like uh, Devden and Stefan or Stefan make uh, good reinforcements for this battle. And Titania, who we haven't used in a long time. Because we're at the point now where Titania could actually be used um, extensively, unlike I neglected her in the first uh, few chapters. Because around this chapter is usually when some of your units should be promoted already. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think of who's going to promote soon. As the Hark is going to promote soon, and I think Jill's going to promote soon as well. So a lot of my units are uh, getting close to that point where they can uh, class up to the next class. Let's see, once again I'm going through all the inventory for all my units and their stats. I did change a few things around, actually. I got rid of all the Laguz weapons my characters had, and then I gave them, like, uh, some other items. Um, one of the, the servant in the info conversation said something about uh, how Oliver uses a lot of uh, horseback units, 
So you might want to bring horse weapons or units that are effective against cavalry, like the Night Killer, the Long Sword, and I think the other one is, uh, it's not Horse Slayer, is it? That's something, but there is, like, no, it's Night Killer, no, Night Killer, uh, Halberd, and the Long Sword. Those weapons are very effective against cavalry, so you might want to bring those if you still have them. I believe that my halberd was, uh, wait, no, it's not a halberd, what am I saying? It's a poleaxe. Uh, sorry about that, but, uh, yeah, I actually wasted, like, all the uses of my, uh, poleaxe already. Or, I either wasted them all, or I only had, like, a few uses left, so I went ahead and sold it. But, I need to stop the commentary and get ready for the next video, so this is some Kirby, see you next time. Later, guys.